Hey, Grace. Hey, Tony. <laughs> Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, I, I want to show you a clip from this Show Me a Hero. Uh, would you like to watch it together? Sure, yeah. Oh, okay. Where should I go? Just this trailer. Okay. Well, don't tell anybody, but I always wanted to be the man. <laughs> the city intentionally segregated its housing for 40 years. The whole damn city government's white. This judge wants to take low-income housing and put it here in East Yonkers. The trash, the drugs. We will die from what this idiot is trying to shove down our throat. I live here, and I am nothing like what they describe. Man with these people. You wanted to live somewhere better, but everything has a cost. It's time you recognize your failure as a leader. Do you want to live where people were angry at you? You know, it's all property values and life and liberty. Underneath it all, it's fear. I played into that fear, too. Powerful. Mm -hmm. There was a lot in there. Have you ever felt opposition to uh, developing these homeless... Um development so. well not just those particular special kinds of developments but I think there's been a lot of opposition to almost any kind of development proposal that's out there and I think that what we saw from the clip in there there was a lot there you know there is fear out in the community fear of the unknown there is ignorance that is based on prejudices and maybe one-time occurrences where some with powerful voices or a collection of individuals on a given street kind of come together and can really set something sideways and I think it's my responsibility as an office holder to try and hold both hands to make sure that we're finding when we have those opportunity sites and we actually can piece together the funding to make something real happen that I'm also reaching out to the community informing them of the facts and trying to beat back a lot of the um, myths and, uh, and untruths that are out there that can otherwise make a project like this go sideways. We're a very built out environment and that means that as neighborhoods change or as, as areas are redeveloped, something new is going to come in. Yeah. Uh, but I got to tell you, even within our existing neighborhoods, we have so many wonderful facilities that are working well and harmoniously with their neighbors. And these are homeless serving or they are places where those with mental health uh, issues are able to go and get the kind of care and services that they need. They're already here and they work well because you think about how to design conditions on that kind of facility so that they are there are no neighborhood impacts, that there is additional security enhancement both for the neighbors and the users of that facility. That traffic and noise and other things to consider are thought through ahead of that kind of development. And if I can take a project like that out there to the community and say, I can predict what some of the opposing viewpoints or concerns are going to be, but if I can show them that we thought about that and we're already ahead of the game and we yeah. can plan to mitigate for that, then I think that I can find a lot of you know support. You know, a woman came to me one time and said, I want to help you take what you need, and she opened her purse like this to me. And I just was, I didn't know what to tell her. I mean, but she even said, is the, is the food enough? I want to do more. What can I do? I didn't really know what to tell her, where to start, so what, what can the general public do if they want to help uh, this situation? I don't know. I, I run into the same issue, too. I have organizations, individuals that come to me all the time and say that they want to help, and, and uh, you know, they just don't know where to start. And I think some of the challenges that we've had for people to get out there and on their own, they have such a pent-up demand and an interest to be helpful yeah. um, that they get out there and without any kind of coordinated effort from nonprofit organizations or from the city or county or others, they're left to their own vices, but directionless. And that's not always been, I think, helpful to the overall situation, whether it's those that are out there that are, they, they go out and purchase 12 sandwiches and they just feel like, you know, dropping them on the street, or, you know, they provide a, a, a number of tents because, that, again, that is also, it's, it's trying to do some good, yeah. but it's not ultimately getting the resources to a long-term solution that we all need to do. But that's also a problem for us yeah. as government officials, where we need to be able to provide that pipeline for volunteers and others to be able to best contribute their efforts in a pathway that is constructive. Here, I think there's actually good hope, Tony, yeah. on the horizon that there are a number of people at the county and the city that are focusing on all things homelessness. There's a lot more 
interest and goodwill than there was, say, even a year ago. There is definitely a uh, command and attention that we are all driven to right now to really, you know, get ourselves involved with. And I know that's been a, my number one priority coming into office. I've only been in this job for three weeks, but I've certainly been paying attention for years now and watched yeah. the situation really get to the dire straits that it is today. I'm heartened now that I'm at the table and I can <laughs> be a little bit more effective that uh, there are people at the county with pretty deep pockets that can actually release a lot of mental health dollars and that are showing a lot more interest and, and they're sincere, I think, in that. I think that there is hope on the horizon in the very near term. Meanwhile, we have coordinating bodies like the Regional Task Force on the Homeless that is absorbing the work of the, there's a wonky thing called the Continuum of Care Council. Uh, but again, we're all trying to be very effective and efficient with our resources and come together so all the right people are at the table making the decisions and allocating the resources to maximum effect. And I think that you're going to see a wild transformation in just the next couple of months that's going to start to have an impact on the ground and help to get more and more people successfully off the streets. The fact that we're talking to you about it right now is, is hope. That's good. Yeah. And there's opposition to a new development and there's a, uh, what can the general public do to get well, uh, a couple of things. I think it's important for the general public, individuals and organizations that are really supportive of that project to really start to come together and form that interest group because there's going to be several steps in the process for which this development is going to be reviewed. The first step starts with the community. Anytime we have a complex facility that is not just a typical home or a typical office building, sometimes there's a use permit that is uh, required for that kind of development. And that triggers the involvement of our community planning group so it could be the North Park planners or it could be the Ocean Beach planners but we have every neighborhood in San Diego a community planning group where these issues can be discussed and reviewed so that organization or that collective of individuals that I talked about uh, they need to be able to very appropriately and calmly explain uh, what this is going to look like and then as I talked about earlier all the possible things or fears or myths or other things that could typically come up in this kind of conversation recognize that that he might be concerned about the population, the traffic, uh, any other aspect of that development, but we have a solution and we've thought about that and here's how it's not going to be, become a problem for the community. And so that community planning group makes a recommendation up or down, but either way, whether, regardless of the recommendation, it still goes up the chain of development command. And then ultimately, as the city council, we can view all that information, what the recommendation is from the planning group. Hopefully it's a positive one, what the merits of the development are. There's a lot, again, we kind of represent the entire case for the development and the city council gets to decide. Usually within our nine council districts, most of the other council members defer to the home council members. So if yeah, it's something yeah. in Hillcrest, people will look to me for my recommendations because I know that community better than others do. And I would do the same for my colleagues. Wow, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> yes, but it's important again that that advocacy group, what can people do? Yeah. That advocacy group needs to make sure that they are staying together and they are lobbying the community, the planning commission, the city council, and that they are on track of where they need to be as advocates in the development process. And you know, a good, a good development partner out there knows that process and will help steer that advocacy at the right way in the right times. Uh, Chris, how do we get funding for our development? I think that there were some lost opportunities we had in the 2016 election year. Many other communities and counties across California looked at opportunities for bonds, for sales tax, quarter cent measures, other kinds of revenue sources for dedicated funding streams for affordable housing or other homeless related services and San Diego did not. But that, that doesn't mean I think we wasted any time. There was a lot of governance questions and a lot of other organizational efforts that we made last year that have set us up right now, I think, to be effective. I mentioned the regional task force on the homeless and how the county and the city and others need to come together in a better way. I think this is important groundwork to lay because you have to make sure that we are all on the same page, that we have a one common plan plan of action for how we are actually going to be able to successfully combat and to a degree end homelessness on the streets of San Diego. And until we're all talking off of the same uh, action plan, 
and it's a little difficult for me to get out there and sell to the voters, here's what I need in additional resources to be able to get the job done. So I believe that we can get to that kind of plan of action this year, and then 2018 will be our next election year where we'll have that opportunity. I don't know, I don't want to prejudice exactly what that kind of revenue is going to look like, if it's a TOT increase or if it's a mega bond or if it's some other kind of you know, revenue stream, but I do think it's important that we come with a responsible plan, be willing to put that question forward to the voters, and then politically advocate for that and hope to get the necessary votes from the voters to be able to have that new revenue brought into San Diego. So how would somebody who's not in your district uh, get the ball rolling? Well, anybody in San Diego County can get uh, the ball rolling. I think it's important to reach out to your uh, elected officials and let them know that this issue is important to you. Reach out to organizations that are effective service providers that are already in the realm of homeless outreach services because they probably have been around for 20 or 30 years and are already at the table and know how to lobby and advocate for as much that we can get in the coming political cycle in 2018. They're welcome to reach out to me even if you're not a constituent, I do want to hear from people and building a list of people that are supportive of this issue because there are going to be points in time in the coming year or two where I'm going to need to activate that list and I'm going to ask people to come down to city council and testify and support for the work that we're trying to get done. This is some heavy lifting and these will be some big dollars, but yeah. the more groundwork that we can lay is going to help us be successful ultimately in the long run.